Hi, I'm Scott Alberts. I'm a professor here at Truman State University. I normally teach statistics, but here I'm going to briefly talk about disciplines and interdisciplinary thinking. This talk was designed for one of my classes, but I'm sharing it publicly on YouTube. So even if you aren't in your class, maybe you'll find something interesting and useful. The class I originally scripted this talk for, GEMS 352, is a junior level interdisciplinary writing course called Why You're Wrong, focused on how people change their minds or not in the face of new evidence and data. I sometimes use these video in my other writing classes as well because disciplinary approaches are an important topic when you're writing. For those of you who are in my class, um, I just said that GIN stands for Junior Interdisciplinary Writing Course. It's not a very good acronym, but who wants to put a W in there? Um, anyway, the I is for interdisciplinary, so we should probably try to have at least some understanding of what interdisciplinary uh, thinking is. You've probably already noticed that you're doing much more than what you would normally expect a statistics professor to talk about, including the things listed here, statistics, social science approaches, rhetoric, philosophy, we're talking about epistemology, what is science, what is truth. Um, and then when you get into your paper, we're hoping you also bring in ideas from your own discipline as well. That's not always an easy thing. But what is a discipline anyway? At Truman and elsewhere, we sometimes use the term in somewhat confusing ways. It refers to your major, but it also refers to the name of your department maybe, and maybe for the career that you're interested in is as well. A student comes to Truman, they wanna be a nurse. So they take courses from nursing faculty to complete a major in nursing. In a way that one's easy, but it's also confusing. What is the discipline of nursing? Discipline also has the broader meaning about practice and effort, study, following a rule, right? Monks follow a discipline is what they say when they take their vows, meaning that they'll do certain things. Um, and in fact, you know, praying a certain schedule every day, that is a kind of discipline as well. Discipline is also what the coach wants. It's what the drill instructor wants. It's what the uh, assistant principal wants to have in your middle school. Lack of discipline is a problem that these kids today have. Of course, kids today have always had that problem as well. Anyway, it's kind of weird. I'm gonna be using a model um, that was proposed by Tanya Augsburg. She's a professor of interdisciplinary studies at Arizona State University. And she's laid out this model. And here at Truman in the last uh, years, we've sort of added to it a little bit, but she has a nice shorthand way of discussing what a discipline is. And even in the places where it doesn't work well, I think um, it helps us to think about it. It has three ideas that we tend to talk about. First, a subject area, the thing that we're studying. Chemists study chemicals, that sort of thing. More importantly, <clears throat> a discipline includes a set of methods that becomes a methodology. Um, and all of us think that methodology is important no matter what your major is. Finally, we have a rhetorical frame that we use, vocabulary, assumptions, customs, that sort of thing. Missing from the list is why. Most disciplines don't spend too much time thinking about why they do things the way they do. In some cases, it might be because the science has evolved to be a certain thing, but in others, it might be for a historic or political reason. Maybe a big name in the field did things a certain way, and we all do it that way as a result. Um, in statistics, one of the ones we talk about is that a 0.05 uh, level of alpha is what we normally use for our measure of significance. And that just came from uh, one of the statisticians scribbled in the margin. Eh, if I was wrong one time in 20, I could probably live with that. Hardly um, the idea that a 5% is a magical line that above that is not significant and below it is. Now, I don't draw very well, even in slides, but for these next few slides, I'm gonna use a simple visual to represent these three things, subject area, methodology, and rhetorical frames. Even in a live class, I scribble this on the board. Anyway, the circle is the subject area. So you study a certain thing. Statisticians, we study data. Chemists study chemicals. Psychologists study how people make decisions. Sociologists study how groups of people make decisions. Anthropologists study how cultures make decisions. Are those really three separate sets of subject areas or just different ways of looking at the same circle? This does imply that there are things that are outside of the subject area. And depending what it is, you might not think that's true. Physicists study particles and forces and energy and matter. Eventually everything turns into physics at a certain level. At that certain level, it certainly does. Maybe everything really is art or economics or politics. The arrows are methods. And when we join them together, we get methodologies. 
right? Sets of methods that work together in order to find knowledge or to find truth according to that discipline. When I draw this on the chalkboard, I try to draw a little bow around them uh, that goes around there, but it looked funny on the slide, so I didn't put it there. Still, methodologies, sets of methods that kind of work together um, to find truth. Finally, the box that surrounds it. That's the rhetorical frame. Definitions, assumptions, customs, terms. Again, some of these um, might not make sense or they might just come out of a historical tradition, but they are still part of the discipline and it's one of the things we would want you to learn as a student who majors in a certain area. So this is a nice visual representation of the Augsburg model of what a discipline is. Does it work for you? Certainly history studies uh, things from the past, but more than that, they do it in a certain way. Certainly not all things that study ye olde times are history, and certainly not all things that study money are economics. In fact, economics, as I say on the slide, study scarcity, and they use a variety of models from other areas. Um, now, why don't you think about your own discipline, your own field? Does this model work for you? There's a discussion question about this for the class. So really think about it. Go ahead and pause it if you need to. I can wait. We know that there are some weaknesses to the model. For instance, we in statistics, we sometimes say that we're a methodology that goes around looking for a subject. So I learned cool statistics techniques. I can use my ANOVA analysis to study biology or health data, or I can use that same ANOVA model to study economics or finance data. So maybe we really are a set of arrows that don't have a circle. Individuals within statistics might have a circle that they focus on a subject area, but maybe the field itself doesn't have one. Does that mean we're not a discipline? That kind of makes me sad because I think I'm in a field. What about things like music or theater? We certainly treat them as disciplines, but do they have a methodology? Do they have an approach like this? Whether it makes sense or not, we're gonna use this quick model so that we can think about some extensions and how we get to interdisciplinary thinking from here. Let me first talk about cross-disciplinary thinking. Cross-disciplinary thinking is the idea that we use your disciplinary techniques, your arrows, on someone else's subject matter, their circles. Maybe like a Reese's cup. I got my chocolate in your peanut butter. One way to notice when this is happening is the use of the word of or as. Um, which is what we've been uh, thinking about a little bit. The history of science or the philosophy of science, that's something our class has included. The chemistry of art, the Bible of literature. We could keep going with this on and on. But the idea that we're gonna use one set of methodology, the methodological tools, but we're gonna look at a circle that's maybe outside of what they normally look at, or um, at least their normal disciplinary boundaries. Is music history the history of music? Maybe, but usually it's not just that if it's done right. It probably also needs to go in the other direction, the music of history. And that leads us to the next idea, multidisciplinary thinking. This is the idea that we have two subjects that are looking at one subject from two different directions. Good art history or music theory history, but art history is multidisciplinary because it's using both ideas from art and ideas from history. So it's thinking about color, line, and texture at the same time, it's thinking about the veracity of sources, about how um, timelines move across, how we bring together historical knowledge in new ways. My hope is that this is what you'll go for in your term paper. You'll look at a single topic from two different directions. Instead of looking for more than two, I think it's better to do two disciplines very well. Moving on to interdisciplinary thinking, the idea that we use multiple methodologies, we come from multiple directions, we make a hybrid frame, it wasn't black, it was black before, now it's orange and kind of faded because we're building it as we go and pulling things in to do that. It's hard to do true interdisciplinary thinking, especially if just for one person. Instead, you might have an interdisciplinary team. For instance, most medical research certainly has doctors, but you also have chemists and biologists, you have statisticians, you have ethicists, psychologists, health educators, the whole team comes together to achieve an interdisciplinary goal rather than hoping that one person can do that. That being said, you hope that those people can at least understand the other person's field so they know how to integrate it into one common conclusion and one common uh, piece of knowledge. We do have interdisciplinary fields like environmental studies or gender studies, but still maybe individuals within that are really just doing uh, one or two disciplines at a time. We can take this a step further um, to the idea of transdisciplinary thinking. Now, this is sort of spacey to me, and it's one of those ideas that might not even exist. 
Um, I sometimes think of it as an asymptote. That is, we get closer and closer to it, but never really get there. Um, the idea, though, is that you move beyond disciplines, beyond frames, beyond vocabulary, uh, to just look for truth wherever it may take us. I am not sure people actually do this. What is nice is that you can use this to think about the holes that are in your own discipline. If you're really thinking about how people in your discipline think about a subject, trying to do transdisciplinary thinking where you think about going beyond your disciplinary boundaries can be a really helpful thing, even if you're not using a specific discipline uh, to focus that. Now, there are certainly fields uh, that uh, seem to be inherently interdisciplinary and people who would say that it's just interdisciplinary automatically. Certainly good political science uses history. It uses economics, it uses uh, anthropology, it uses psychology, philosophy, certainly it uses statistics. In fact, I've heard people say that if you take away the other disciplines, political science doesn't exist. It has nothing that's truly just theirs. I'm not sure that's true, but it's fun to tease political scientists and science, political science majors. Alternatively, some branches of the same field use very different methods right in their own uh, discipline. Take biology. Some biologists are really almost chemists uh, doing lab science using uh, the same techniques that you use in a chemistry class. Others are out in the field taking samples, looking at trees, collecting rodents or bats, right? And they seem to be very different methods. And are they even really arrows that are, you know, tied together with my little bow that I never did draw? Or is biology itself actually interdisciplinary? At Truman, we have a new major uh, in molecular biology and chemistry. It's cool. Um, is that two things or is that one thing, right? From the one end of biology, and the other end from chemistry, are we getting to the same circle or the same rhetorical frame? Maybe the differences are just vocabulary because chemists use one set of terms and biologists use the other. You can ask them. I think they would say it's two things that come together. Um, you can also imagine that an individual paper or an individual research project is clearly an interdisciplinary area, but the paper itself is not interdisciplinary. A paper called Women in Japan in the 1920s might be a history paper but it's not actually using ideas of gender studies or anthropology or sociology. It really is a history paper. That's okay. But in this class, we're hoping that you can have a little bit more than that. And in fact, this idea that we can never become experts um, in an interdisciplinary area, if it takes a lifetime to become a master of one discipline, how could we do two at the same time in a junior level course? How can any of us be interdisciplinary or even multidisciplinary? Well, there are some signs that we can look for. Can you recognize the discipline when you see it? Um, you know, we ask you to take introductory courses all around campus. It's one of the ideas of being a liberal arts school. Does that help you do that? Does having that one course in psychology or history or English help you think about things in a certain way? Does it help you understand what that discipline is? How much do you as a non-expert need to know in order to help out with that? Can you recognize when someone is doing a discipline badly? Certainly we see people on the internet say stupid things all the time from a variety of disciplinary perspectives. Do I have to say, well, I'm not a psychologist. I can't really criticize that guy. I hope not because we need all of us to point out stupid people on the internet and to help, uh, help us move in a better direction from there. Certainly most disciplines do have these connecting principles, things like critical thinking, things like clear communication, Things like having evidence inform a logical flow of ideas, right? Like my earlier video about logic chains. Um, for the assignment that goes along with this video, I'm going to ask you to again watch a few different videos and to think about whether it's interdisciplinary, what disciplines are being used, does the person seem to really understand how that discipline works? Are they cross-disciplinary, multidisciplinary, or interdisciplinary? Being me, I do have another Hans Rosling video for you to watch. This one has IKEA boxes. Um, which are being used to uh, show population growth. So anyway, that is a quick uh, look into the difference between disciplinary, cross-disciplinary, multidisciplinary, and I hope you found it helpful.